Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video will be on hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus is an obstruction to the flow of cerebrospinal fluid inside the brain, leading to dilatation of the ventricular system proximal to the site of the obstruction. This picture shows an overview picture of the ventricular system, where you can see that there are two lateral ventricles, the third ventricle and the fourth ventricle, and the cerebral aqueduct connects the third and fourth ventricles. So any obstruction in any sites in the ventricular system can cause hydrocephalus. There are two main types of hydrocephalus, which are the non-communicating type and the communicating type. So both of these types will be caused by different causes. For the non-communicating type, which is also called as obstructive hydrocephalus, it occurs when there is obstruction within the ventricular system or the aqueduct and it interrupts with the cerebrospinal fluid flow. Whereas for the communicating hydrocephalus, there is obstruction at the arachnoid villi and causing failure of cerebrospinal fluid reabsorption. So these are the possible causes for both non-communicating and communicating hydrocephalus. For the non-communicating type, which is the obstructive hydrocephalus, it can be due to congenital malformation such as aqueduct malformation or stenosis, and other malformations that cause obstruction, such as Dandy Walker syndrome, atresia of the outflow foramina of fourth ventricle, and also anal carry malformation. Other causes include posterior fossa neoplasm, such as medulloblastoma or astrocytoma, vascular malformation, and for preterm babies, they might have intraventricular hemorrhage where the blood in the CSF may give rise to adhesion, which will obstruct the flow of the CSF. CSF is cerebrospinal fluid. So, on the other hand, for communicating hydrocephalus, the causes include subarachnoid hemorrhage, meningitis, can be due to pneumococcal or tuberculous meningitis, intrauterine infections such as toxoplasmosis or cytomegalovirus, and a rare cause is choroid plexus papilloma, which increases the production of the CSF, causing hydrocephalus. So, in children less than 2 years old, the clinical features include a head circumference that is larger compared to the other parts of the body. The cranial sutures are separated, and we will see a bulging and tense anterior fontanelle distended scalp veins, and if the hydrocephalus is left untreated, the eyes will deviate to a downward gaze, which we call as the sunset sign, shown in this picture here. So the eyes are looking downwards. Whereas for older children, more than 2 years old, the clinical features are slightly different. So they might complain of symptoms such as headache, which is worse on lying down or coughing. And this headache is due to the increase in intracranial pressure caused by the hydrocephalus. They might present as irritable and non-stop crying, vomiting in the morning, or changes in their personality, mood, or school performance. Whereas the signs to take note are bradycardia, hypertension, papillary edema if present for a long time, and diplopia due to the cranial nerve 6 paresis. These are the complications of hydrocephalus, such as seizure, failure to thrive, mental retardation, and also neurological deficit. So the investigations include radiological investigations, such as cranial ultrasound, to look for evidence of ventricular dilatation, and we can also do CT or MRI of the brain. Ophthalmoscopy, look for evidence of papillary edema, and centaur charts, where we should monitor the head circumference of the child over time. So to diagnose hydrocephalus, it is usually diagnosed by history and clinical examination. And it can also be diagnosed antenatally by ultrasound screening or routine cranial ultrasound in preterm babies. So for management, the head circumference should be monitored over time on the centaur charts. And the treatment aims are treating the cause of the hydrocephalus relieve the symptoms, and also minimize the neurological damage to the child. The mainstay of treatment is ventricular shunting, 
it can be either ventricular atrial or ventricular peritoneal. So this picture shows a picture of the ventricular shunt. So for example, ventricular peritoneal shunt, it is a narrow plastic tube that drains the excess cerebrospinal fluid into the abdomen to, re to prevent the buildup of excess cerebrospinal fluid, which is the hydrocephalus condition. So the, in this picture here, you can see that there is the ventricular catheter connecting the ventricles and the distal catheter can either be drained into the peritoneal cavity, which we call as the ventricular peritoneal shunt, or it can be drained in the atrium of the heart, which is the ventricular atrial shunt. And this catheter, there is a valve seen and the catheter lies tunneled under the skin. So the ventricular peritoneal shunt, it has a one-way valve, which is this valve seen in the picture, and it only allows the fluid to move down away from the brain. The valve has a pressure setting. So when there is too much cerebrospinal fluid in the brain and pressure starts to build up, then the valve will open and allow the cerebrospinal fluid to drain into the peritoneal cavity until the pressure is back to normal. So that's all for this video. Thank you.